Hey y'all, what is up? Welcome to the Farmer's Table. If you're new here, I'm so glad you're here. And if you're not new here, welcome back. I'm also glad you're here. My name is Jess. Here on this channel, my hopes is to just teach you guys what I know about real food, uh, having grown our own food for the last decade um, and having learned started learning cooking from scratch I guess I should say about 20 years ago I've been doing it my entire adult life um, I'm still learning I am not a professional but I love being able to share what I've gained over all of these years of feeding a family with the hopes of keeping our food healthy and nourishing and real so I've been a little MIA the last few weeks here on this channel and um, I wanted to address it. I know I don't have to. Every time I explain stuff like this, people are like, Jess, you don't have to explain. You have a life. And while, yes, that's true, I know I don't have to explain anything. I also really value you guys, and I honor you being here with me. And so when I just like go MIA and don't post much at all for weeks on end, I kind of like to just address it and acknowledge it so that expectations can be maintained. I'm the type of person that can have a lot of grace, but I like to know what to expect. So that's probably why I have, to have a tendency to explain things, just because it's what I like. Uh, but yeah, I've actually, I, I guess struggled a little bit finding the balance. So I have my other YouTube channel that I started originally, my original YouTube channel, Roots and Refuge. You know, in balancing life, we have a farm a homestead we grow a lot of food I have a lot of kids trying to find the balance and make videos has always been a little bit of a challenge now I feel like this channel is really important so much so that I actually was talking to my husband this week and I was like I've, I've got to find some sort of routine and again like one of the things he always says this to me and I, for some reason I I have a really hard time like wrapping my head around this, but he's always said, you need to stop worrying about perfection and stop worrying about the fact that people may walk through the kitchen or there may be distractions or there may be a mess and just turn the camera on and hang out with the people and tell them what you know. And I, I logically know that it's hard for me to accept that. But here I am doing just that. Uh, this morning I just have a couple of odds and ends things going on in the kitchen. And then I do have some actual recipe videos that I've got this stuff together that I'm going to be filming today. So regular uploads are back. <laughs> and I am getting a grip on my routine um, and trying to do what I want to do. You know how it is sometimes in life where you have your idea of what you want to do. But then if you have any tendency at all to go the path of least resistance, it's hard to do what you want to do. Uh, and unfortunately, I think that's probably one of the big struggles with anybody wanting to cook real food is that we end up going the path of least resistance. And in the case of me making content for this channel, it's definitely been that kind of thing. And it'd be easier to just shoot, to just, to just do the dinner without shooting it. But I'm, go I'm making the content. I'm doing the thing. This is important and I'm glad you're here. Before I get into shooting those recipe videos today, I have a couple of little odds and ends things I have to do in the kitchen that wasn't really like instruction worthy. This is a jar of preserved lemons. A handful of weeks ago, a friend of mine named Betsy came from California to visit me and well, I say to visit me. She bought land here. She came to visit her land. She visited me in the process. <laughs> and she brought me a, a bag full of lemons from her tree in her backyard. In my, my mouth is watering with these lemons. Um, in her backyard in California. She bought me like a big grocery shit sack full of lemons. And I decided to take the opportunity to preserve some of them. If you've never had preserved lemons, this... They're very popular in like, I know Mediterranean cooking, Middle Eastern cooking uses preserved lemons. Mmm. Yes. That's so good. So what you do is you literally like, you just cut the lemons kind of almost in half, but you leave them sort of together. And you fill them up with a lot of salt. You pack them into a jar. There's nothing in here but lemon juice and salt and lemons. And you pack them into a jar and you just keep putting salt in between the layers. There's a lot of salt in here. And as you mash them down, obviously with all the salt, it causes a lot of the liquid to come out and you ferment them. So these have been fermenting for between like two or three weeks, something like that, maybe it's like two and a half weeks. 
and you just taste them as they go to see how like fermented you want them. And then now I'm actually packing these into smaller jars. I could use this jar, but this jar has like a hole in the top and you, I could plug it and just use this. However, then I wouldn't be able to ferment other things. So I'm just moving this into some jars that I can put lids on and store in the refrigerator. Um, and how you use these is you actually eat the rind and not the flesh. Um, so you pull out like a piece of the rind like I just did and you actually scrape what's left of the flesh off. You can slice this up. It is, gosh, it's good. It's like a really salty lemon pickle. Very bright, very citrusy. And it's commonly used in like, I'm gonna say the word wrong, tagines, like in like basically roasted meat, curried meats. I was seeing where people use them, they cut them up and like cook rice with like the cut up lemon rinds in. Here's a good example of how they, so the whole lemon, you cut the ends off like this and then kind of cut it into quarters but without separating it see that and so what this looked like whenever i had it is and then you fill it up with salt and you put it in there and i'm going to mash these down into this jar so i can cover them so the rind softens a lot um and if you purchase preserved lemons they're super expensive uh, and usually only available at like specialty stores i've seen them there's this really cute little kitchen boutique -y type store that has like really high-end stuff in it I like to go window shopping there, but I don't usually buy very much. They have these little jars of preserved lemons and it's like $16 or something. The only thing is with these is that a lot of times grocery store lemons are waxed and they have like really thick rinds because oftentimes they're picked like way before they're ripe. I was reading when I was looking up how to do this, they suggest if you're buying yours from the grocery store to preserve to do Meyer lemons because they typically have much thinner skins um, and that if you are using any store-bought lemons to make sure that you scrub the skins really really well to make sure that if there is any wax on them that it gets off but since these were homegrown I didn't have to worry about that that's why I wanted to make this with them Plus, I just had a ton of lemons. She brought me a whole lot. And while I made like a lot of lemon things with them and really enjoyed using them fresh, I didn't want to risk them starting to go bad. So I did one jar of this. So it's March. I live in the Midlands of South Carolina, which is pretty mild climate. Um, it's already getting very springish here. And though we will still have, you know, chances of frost for the next month, the farm is definitely coming to life. Like everything is kind of coming out of dormancy. I've got buds on my peach trees and I was noticing that the, the cherry bushes were budded up today. Blueberry bushes are budded up. Um, I've got asparagus coming out of the ground. And it's funny, this, this time of year has so much that I look forward to. <laughs> and I get really excited about upcoming food during this particular time of year. Of course, starting lots of seeds in the greenhouse and preparing for this year's garden. Of course, I'm thinking about everything that I'm gonna do with that stuff. We don't really take a, a real break from growing here. Um, in the winter because it's mild and so I, I have food growing cabbages and kale and all the brassicas and roots over the winter but it's definitely about to become very abundant uh, and I am so excited if there's some I wish I had some specific word that was like the great anticipation of really good food because that's what I feel this time of year is just an incredible anticipation for all of the things that I'm going to eat. <laughs> Does anybody feel that? <laughs> like, well, planning the garden and planning the year's worth of work on the farm, it's literally, I'm, I'm motivated by all of the wonderful things that I'm going to eat. I just tasted a bite of the flesh that I had scraped off that piece of rind. And I understand why they say that you don't typically want to eat that. It is pungent. It is extremely salty. I mean, it's kind of good. Like, if you like salty lemons, like, it's actually, I'm kind of here for it. But also, it's it's a little bit, like, toe curly. Isn't that nice? This is going to be so pretty. So, one thing that I also read that you could do 
with these is put cinnamon sticks in them and bay leaves. Those were the two um, commonly suggested seasonings. I did not. I just did salt and lemons. I kept it simple just because I never made them before. So a lot of times when I'm trying something for the first time, I like to do it as sort of a simple baseline so I know what it's supposed to be like. And that way, like, if I were to put bay leaves and cinnamon sticks, I think black peppercorns was the other thing in this, and then I tasted it and I'm like, oh, I don't really like this. I want to know why. Is it because I don't like preserved lemons or because I don't like the spices? That would be highly unlikely. I rarely run into a food that I don't like. <laughs> there are some things that I'll try that I'm like, I don't like that as much as other stuff, but... Uh, when it comes to anything that's like this, that is fresh food preserved by fermentation, I literally never tried one that I was like, that's not for me. So putting this in the fridge is gonna stop the fermentation. Everything I was reading say that it, like, it lasts in the fridge for like months and months and months, so. Which it should, with, with this much salt in it, like, it should be solid. <laughs> I need to make bread, but. I have not eaten this morning, and if I don't do that soon, I'm gonna be, I get hangry real quick. Sometimes in March, I like to think about how it was for people before they, oh, this bowl is not clean. I've been teaching my younger sons to do dishes, and it's okay, they're gonna learn, they're gonna get it. It's gonna be worth it, but. It's definitely an investment of patience on, on this end. <laughs> so back in the old days before people could go just like buy groceries at the grocery store, oftentimes March was called like the hungry month. And it's essentially where you've worked through your pantry, you've worked through your winter stores, a lot of things are running out and food is just starting to grow again. So you're not like thoroughly into the abundance of the spring season. And I mean, obviously we have access to grocery stores. I go to Costco, like I, I'm not experiencing the hungry month of March, but this is oftentimes whenever I start feeling a desire to, look at that egg, nice dark brown. I start feeling a desire to like really eat what's growing on the farm. I don't know, there is a hunger in me again while I'm planning the year's worth of food. I'm just excited to experience it and there's a thrill. Even though I have been eating fresh food and we do have access to the grocery store, there's a thrill when the dandelions come in. And I know I'm about to get to make dandelion jelly and when the asparagus starts popping up and I know that's gonna be on the plates regularly and it's, it's just thrilling. A lot of the food that I eat, that we eat, my family eats, it doesn't necessarily look like a balanced meal on a plate. It doesn't have like, oh, meat, vegetable, starch. You know, a lot of people view a meal needing to have all of this balance or, you know, with breakfast, they feel like they've gotta have some grains in there in order to have it balanced. And whatever you wanna do is obviously fine. But for me, a lot of what my meals look like is something like this where I just scramble, you know, a few eggs. And then this is duck fat from our farm, from a duck, from ducks that we processed. Put a little bit of that in a pan. So I don't, I don't personally eat dairy for the most part. I can eat some, but I can't eat a whole lot. I have some health issues that has required some overhaul of my diet. I still cook a lot of stuff that I don't eat because it's not that the things are bad. It's not that I think dairy is bad. It's just I have to be mindful with autoimmune issues, what I'm eating. But I actually got goats. I, I used to have goats and we got out of them and I recently just got them back like this weekend. And so I've been milking goats. I think I'm gonna make goat cheese today and I'm thrilled. <laughs> so this whole like few egg scramble, I make this chili crisp stuff that I like to eat on eggs, but I'm gonna be able to put some nice soft goat cheese, fresh made. I don't love store-bought goat cheese. It, I don't wanna eat it if it tastes like a goat smells. <laughs> but when you use really, really fresh goat milk, and the goats that I got, they're Nubians, they give really sweet milk, and really fresh goat cheese, few dollops of that, nice soft cheese in with eggs and chili crisp. I mean, that is an easy meal. And look at this, these eggs are almost done. A few minutes of cooking, eating something that delicious. We don't have any goat cheese today because I didn't get to that before I, I needed to eat something. I think one of the most freeing things in cooking real food and eating real food to me is becoming free from that thought that like, 
a meal needs to look a certain kind of way, that it needs to have an overall balance on every plate. There, We have meals that don't have vegetables in them. We have meals that are all vegetables. We have a lot of simple food like this. We eat a lot of like scrambled eggs or just some, you know, cut up and cut up bits of cheese or some raw veggies out of the garden. Like a lot of our food is super simple. And I'm looking instead of saying, I need to see balance on every plate. I'm looking at the overall day to day and week and saying, okay, I want to see nourishment across the board for the week. And it's just really, really freeing because what we have come to think is normal for food is just so not normal that I think looking at restaurant menus or like what's presented as necessary is just a really bad way to try to make our home kitchens operate because like this is solid it's nourishing I'm gonna feel good after I eat it I should make a video telling you guys how to make this. Chili Crisp is the bomb.com. If you've not had this and you can, you can play with it and kind of make it however spicy you want, that's definitely going on my list. I'm gonna eat this food. I'll see you in a minute. I can't find my tea strainer. I'm gonna make some tea. This is, this is one of our teas from our loose leaf tea company and roastery. Um, this is honey, it's called honey roux, but it's red rooibos and honey bush tea. It's really good, especially with honey and goat milk in it. <laughs> I'm so excited about dairy products. I can't find my strainer because my children are doing dishes and I'm gonna use my French press. Which works. It's a little overkill for one cup of tea, but it'll do. And I've gotta start my bread. This, I'm just gonna be doing my recipe today that I have done a thorough video on. I'll put a link to it if you missed that. But I've gotta get a couple loaves going. It's, I usually bake it in the afternoons into the evening so that I can pull it out of the oven and set it out to, to cool and then wrap it up before we go to bed. But we have baseball this evening so I've gotta make it earlier in the day than I'm used to. I actually just realized the time and remembered that I have a meeting in about 10 minutes, which means that I need to quit talking and actually get this stuff done quickly. I am glad, however, that I did turn on the camera this morning and I am filming multiple recipes over the next two days to keep regular content coming up every, you know, a few videos a week is my goal right now, which I think is totally doable. I am definitely cooking enough to show that as long as I'll just lower the standard on things having to be tidy and just so. While I was eating, I was editing the first part of this video and I was kind of laughing at myself at having multiple instances of all the things that I'm excited to eat. I actually think that that's one of the great values that I have to offer you guys. We gotta eat. We're, we're gonna eat whether we're excited about it or not. And if we're not excited about it and we're not mindful about it and we're not finding joy in it, then we're a lot more likely to fall into conveniences and foods that really don't support health in our bodies and don't support culture in our family. And you know, food is such a powerful thing. And honestly just choosing to find joy in it and cultivating excitement in yourself around food is an incredibly powerful tool and it's a powerful way to really make the most out of what you've got to do anyway. So thank you guys for hanging out with me today and all the days you do. I bless you. Until next time.